and welcome to Adobe Live. It's so good to see you guys in the chat. I've already got my best friend, Anthony Sims, and also Cody Bear. Woohoo! Hashtag Beartober. It's going on. <laughs> uh, we've got so much fun packed for you today. Uh, I'm a host, Anna Davis Court, by the way. Uh, and we've got Kevin Kwong here. It's so exciting to see his work. I can't wait to see him paint live. This is his first Adobe Live, so be super welcoming in the chat. Uh, also, we have a full day packed, full to the brim with scheduling. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what we have today. Uh, before us at 7.30, we had designing product mock-ups with Julia. Then we had the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with our girl Voodoo Val, woohoo, that looks so cool. I just caught the tail end of it. So definitely do that challenge and uh, participate this week. And then of course we have drawing and painting Whoa, with Kevin. And then we've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge after us with Andrew Hawkrattle. Uh, 12 p.m. We've got the mobile app design with Sarah. We've got 2 p.m. XD daily creative challenge with Peter. And to end the day, we've got doodle therapy with Alice Lee. And today the, the guest is Deborah Lee. Are they related? You'll have to tune in to find out. <laughs> so uh, today we are so happy that you're here for us this Monday, uh, again, to celebrate Kevin's first Adobe Live. So Kevin, let's talk a little bit about who you are, what you do and what you want to do today. Yeah, thanks, Anna. No, I'm super excited to be here. Um, uh, my name is Kevin, you know, as you mentioned, but I've been an illustrator and designer in uh, the tech industry for about eight years now. Eight um, years, wow. Eight years, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long road. Um, on the <laughs> side, I do some volunteer work for, volunteer illustrating for a nonprofit called Rahim. And, oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm, and we focus on enabling people to report accounts of police abuse and yeah. on the side uh I'm, i do a lot of what i'm going to be demoing today which is my own sort of like escapist magical realism paintings so that's yeah. crazy you say on the side i've seen your portfolio it's absolutely amazing if we can get a link in the chat for uh kevin's portfolio it would be really great because your work is gorgeous sure. oh that's true yeah you can show your portfolio as yeah well. sure so this is some of my work. Oh, heck yeah. Look how gorgeous the textures, guys, the textures. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so this is sort of like the personal style section because I think the work that I do for my day to day is actually quite different from uh, the stuff that I like to do for fun or like my passion projects. Um, for sure. Yeah, so I'm trying to flex this muscle a little more. Um, another big project that I worked on for myself more recently was called Hypemon. And I'm into landscapes, but I'm really into character design as well and streetwear and fashion. Um, so this is this was like a, a series where I was on a roll. I think I did like 20, 21 of these characters um, over a few months. Um, and I was just pumping them out, but this was super fun too. That is so cool. Just character after character, trying to stretch your skills. Yeah, characters. <laughs> oh, I would do these uh, logos and sort of create them and make them like stamps. And so I would bring them back into uh, the characters that I created to make that world more cohesive and convincing. So, so was, cool. Yeah. And I love the pop culture references that you've gotten there. Obviously, Totoro oh, yeah. is like a place in my heart. Yeah. So I love seeing him in there. I like the yeah. little Kirby headphones. Come on. Totally. So cool. <laughs> oh, you picked that up really quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Got an eye for detail, man. <laughs> cool. Um, but that's one of the wonderful things that people can look at your portfolio and find all different kinds of details to pull out. And uh, today, what do you think? Are you going to add like crazy detail? <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've got two I, days. <laughs> I know. We'll it. see how far I can get. Um, but yeah. I guess we can just get right into it, yeah? Yeah, what kind of uh, thing do you have planned? What do you feel like drawing today, painting? Cool, <laughs> well, so I started with a rough sketch, um, but the concept that I have is, it's a, it's a guy in a kayak in the Arctic, and he's kind of following a, like a flaming jellyfish migration. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> who doesn't do that every year? Right, yeah. <laughs> I love I, it. So I, I don't know, you know, my inspirations come from all over the place. I feel like on Facebook, I get hit with a lot of viral animal videos. And yes, so, oh, yeah. so much. Yeah, like so 90%. That, that feeling of like um, people on a boat and they see like a, a school of like, is it a school of dolphins or whales kind of next right. to them? 
and everybody's like, whoa. Um, I just wanted to carry that that feeling into this drawing. The feeling of wonder at the yeah, ocean. Yeah, the or feeling like, of wonder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is crazy if you've ever been out on open water and felt like creatures underneath you. Like, yeah, what? totally. I know. <laughs> um, and that, and I, I live in Northern California. So as you know, we've had a lot of wildfires and mm. that's kind of, I think, just influenced and made its way into my brain a bit. Um, so I'm just combining a bunch of different elements yeah. Definitely. I feel you. I'm on West Coast as well in Portland. And uh, I feel like we're left the fire nation now. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh, we've experienced it. Flame you, Hotman. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel Susan's oh. Comet come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen Avatar The Last Airbender, you're not getting this. But oh my gosh. it's great. Trust me. Reference yeah. gold. <laughs> Very good. Oh, Stan Rapp is saying, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> In the chat uh i think that's a chant for you also anthony sims is saying uh kevin you're already amazing thanks for doing that, that non-profit work amazing oh, love it uh cody bear says that's rad <laughs> and kevin oh. uh, alejandro says cannot wait to see what kevin creates <laughs> talking about himself or you because you know it could oh. be himself in the third person too <laughs> yes i should get Kevin's on tonight. it um yeah so i mean i'll show you guys really quickly this is what's on my other screen. This is a collection of like references that I have. Oh, so um, cool. Yeah, and really? as you can see, they're from all different sources. I have this person on uh, a kayak and I really like the way that she's posed, but maybe I'm gathering another reference just for more of the form. Um, I really liked the way these uh, icebergs kind of broke apart and I wanna replicate that shape language um and so some are for lighting some are for different forms that i wouldn't expect to see because mm. i haven't i can count the amount of times that i've seen snow in real life like on two hands really oh yeah. man california baby <laughs> yeah so i rely on the internet a lot for things that i don't really have an ingrained visual library for that is um, a great call yeah and then these are more references uh, you know, they're jellyfish, but it's just also like a, a rocket kind of launching. And I wanted to look at the smoke and um, you don't, I think references are great because you don't really have to pull from the exact things that you're looking for. You Absolutely. Can be creative with your references as well. Definitely. I agree thoroughly that like every aspect of it, having different reference for it is a great thing to pass on to the chat, you know, our creative community, uh, that it's not just, you know, oh, uh, finding reference for the folds on somebody's shirt, but it's like the the rocket smoke, how it comes out of the back of the yeah, jellyfish. <laughs> totally. And ideas can come from that as well. Um, for sure. Cool. So I actually came quite prepared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get more done in our two sessions today. So I did a more refined drawing. Um, this is usually my springboard. And I find that the more that I problem solve at this stage, um, the better the final outcome is. Uh, and so you'll notice like from the original sketch, I kind of moved certain things around like in this area right here, I really didn't like how this wasn't creating a proper tangent. This jellyfish <laughs> is just like hitting this corner and that makes it really awkward. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to create more overlaps um just to make the piece a lot more dynamic you know this is kind of awkwardly spaced too so i do some problem solving between my rough like gestural sketch and then this drawing yeah that is a great one too yeah. you're just full of tips <laughs> watching for the tangents as early as possible making oh sure gosh. that your like roadmap is clear <laughs> yeah absolutely and i also it just makes me feel more comfortable like going into the painting you can be really I, I know so many artists that just get anxious with like a blank slate, you know? Oh, um, completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you can prepare yourself more, it's super helpful, at least for me. Um, and putting stuff down and not being afraid that like, oh, I'm making tangents or whatever. You can fix that as you go. Like the totally. different iterations help that blank canvas state get away. Absolutely. So uh, this is sort of, I always... <laughs> 
I have this dream that like I'll have an intern one day to just do this for me. But <laughs> this Don't is we like, all? <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, I guess a, a lot of you should be familiar with this stage, but I'm just sort of like loosely creating the broad shapes and layers mm -hmm. um, and filling in the line drawings. I'm using my pen tool right now um, just because I feel like it's pretty fast at this and it's pretty effective and I've gotten used to that. Excellent. Yeah. It's very interesting to see a different artist's approach to this. And uh, by the way, Anthony Jackson asked in the chat, do you make your own brushes? Uh, I don't, I, sometimes I make my own brushes if there's a call for it. Um, mm -hmm. Or a lot of the times maybe I'll modify the way the brush lays down. Usually I'll take a, a brush from another artist first um, mm -hmm. that I find, or I'll use a lot of the, I believe it's the Kyle Webster brush. Absolutely, yeah, which yeah. come free with CC. <laughs> oh my gosh, when All that happened, brushes. I was ecstatic. I've wanted to try them for so long. And been... Absolutely. I know, I was the exact same way. I had bought his brushes for like a, probably a year before that, and then he became part of the CC family, and it was just like, <gasps> Okay, yes. I've got them all now. I'm oh brush my gosh, rich. <laughs> it's so great. So I mean, great. And to expand on like that that answer, I do like brush trades with friends. I don't know if anybody else does that, but I find it super fun. That's um, great. Yeah, especially if I'm digging like certain textures or styles, or I want to know more about how they do a certain thing. Um, we'll just kind of swap swap brushes with each other. Love it. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, uh, Cody Bear was very nicely mentioning something I forgot to talk about, which is our artist spotlight, which we are going to be doing uh, later today, which is basically a segment where we highlight an artist and just basically give them the, the, the coverage that we're given all of our lovely artists here. And so we can just celebrate their awesome work. And if you want to be a part of this in the future, there is a tab above the chat that is called Artist Spotlight. You can nominate yourself or somebody you love, uh, their work, you know, <laughs> you don't have to love them as a person, but uh, they will become a part of the Monday segment, which is the Artist Spotlight. So we can expect that at around 11.05. We'll get into that uh, and show you an awesome new artist that you should definitely follow on Behance. And also, if you're watching this on Behance, thank you so much for being here in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, please come to Behance so we can read your chat stuff. We would love to talk to you. And Anthony Sim says, yay, pen tool, because I know yeah. <laughs> uh, he does photo manipulation for a lot of his work and the pen tool is a very important part of that. So it's really oh, cool yeah. to see it being used in this way. I mean, I, I really like it because I mean, sometimes when you draw and you try to get a mixture of organic and sort of geometric edges, this just really helps control the curve of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it fills for you, which is great. It does, you know, it does labor. <laughs> Absolutely. The, what you're talking about, the right. geometric kind of cut lines of the areas. I guess it yeah. would just take a little bit more work to get that in there. A little bit, yeah. There's this hotkey, I, I forget what it is. Y'all can search it up, but um, you can switch between like organic lasso tool and sort yeah, of- like, magnetic. Have you done that? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Definitely. I think it's shift if you hold it down while you're using it, it'll oh, create okay. a straight line. But okay. somebody correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, because it's been a while since I've played with the lasso tool. Yeah. Um, I mean, another way or another reason why I'm sort of using the pen tool, I'm, I'm going to break these silhouettes later, I'm sure, um, <laughs> is because something that's kind of developed in my style over time is this contrast between um, really sharp, uh, clean shapes and uh, organic textures inside. Definitely. Um, yeah. And I'm all about opposites and putting things together and breaking things apart. So juxtapositions. Yeah. <laughs> I think I love it's really it. cool. Taste can kind of come with like taking a lot of opposing elements that you find in your daily life and kind of just jamming them together and seeing what happens. Kind of like icebergs and uh, fire jellyfish. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got to call them something like firefish, jelly 
flames. I don't uh, know. Something. Uh, I would love for <laughs> someone to name that for me. If anybody has a suggestion. That oh, heck awesome. yeah. Put it in the chat. Uh, <laughs> Jellyfish and fire. Have you ever been to the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's got such great jellyfish exhibit. Like the, um, <sighs> I think they call them moon jellyfish or something like that. Oh, yeah. they're just so peaceful. It's great. I feel like that was in my early childhood and that's probably kind of why that's here now too yes yeah inspiration from the deep deep part of the brain yeah <laughs> i love it <laughs> sometimes it's cool to like go through your own work and think about oh, where did this actually come from like did i have something that i can't remember or an experience or something you know? for sure yeah uh, by the way, where was it? Uh, I just missed it. Oh, the chat moves. Why does it have to move? Uh, somebody said hello from Pakistan. And oh, yeah, there we go. Oh. Somia says hi, Anna and Kevin. Love from Pakistan. Hello. And if you guys are all around the world, then shout out where you're from. We love to see how diverse That's of a crowd awesome. we get here. It's definitely awesome. <laughs> Oh, and Izzy M says electric firefishes, or la uh, Mike says lava jellies. Oh, okay. Those are both great suggestions, actually. Far better than what I could come up with. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we should all have like a brainstorm session together and just come yes. up with the ultimate name. Please and then obviously call. you got to title the piece that. <laughs> yeah, I, but actually writing is a huge, I feel like not all, not every artist uses this, but writing can be such a huge beneficial tool uh, mm -hmm. for creating ideas. Um, and, uh, even at the end of the day, sometimes when I'm like thinking about a new painting, I'll just be in bed on like my notes app. Um, just documenting like ideas that come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Cause that's the best time for ideas, right? When your brain is slightly off and you're just like, Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I totally agree. Like, either when right before bed or maybe when you wake up after you've been dreaming, um, your brain can like assemble ideas that you wouldn't have expected otherwise. Absolutely, surprise ideas from nowhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere else in your head. Absolutely, I'm a children's book illustrator and I've always wanted to write my own book. So I have like 5 million of those ideas in notes app. Like <laughs> this could be a book, this could be a book, but you know, it's actually doing it that makes a difference to me. <laughs> like, you can have yeah. a million ideas, but you gotta execute them. You no, know, that's the hardest part. Does anybody else have issue with just, you know, getting in there and doing the things that you actually want to do for yourself <laughs> and drawing? Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the biggest difference between, you know, the doers and everybody else because it's everybody has ideas, which is a great part of just life and humanity. But uh, getting them done is the the really big difference. Yeah, but also not giving up, obviously, because uh, I've been watching this show called The Toys That Made Us. Oh, and interesting. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's uh, basically a documentary of a lot of toys that got very, very popular at some point, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or My Little Pony and like how big of a deal they were at their heyday. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the creators are just like, oh yeah, I had an idea. And then somebody else like made it. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, oh man. I could be like a gazillionaire if I had just like <laughs> actually produced it. Yeah, but that's a huge incentive. Definitely. Getting that's ahead. Why. A lot of times it takes money to make money and all that jazz. So it's kind of difficult, but... A lot of entrepreneurs, I mean, everything starts from nothing at some point. So totally. uh, just gotta, gotta do one step that gets you to the next, that gets you to the next and not give up. And not give up. Yeah, that's key. Mm -hmm. I like his green head. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So I, I guess I should explain the reason why I'm doing these things in such high contrast is just so I can see the shapes. For sure. Um, yeah. So often like I'll use red and green or like blue and orange or whatever, or just things that are on opposite sides of the color wheel mm -hmm. um, so that I can see them more clearly. A blood red sky. Blood yeah. has been spilt this night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sick of orange, like red skies. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. It's, it's just, you know, too much of a thing. I know. 
But uh, I, I definitely like that approach of like seeing all the layers really clearly. I'm fascinated by how you're going to add color to this and like make it your color palette because yeah. yeah, it's difficult to put colors in when you don't see them against each other. So like, oh, you know, yeah. color is all relative and all that. So absolutely be interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to explain that uh, when that comes up in detail. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, Jerry says Texas representing what what we've got some Dorchester, Massachusetts. Franklin is from there. Uh, awesome. Gloria says hi from California. Oh, yeah, yeah locals. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Uh, Sammy cool. says hi from Ontario, Canada. Aww. Oh, and Delphine is from Bordeaux, France. Wow. Fancy. Very, very cool. And Stan from Ukraine. Oh, oh yes. from India. <laughs> we've got so many people oh i love it uh angeli from the philippines sorry if i uh ever don't say your name right anybody <laughs> um and wendy asks uh did he make all the layer shape layers of the small icebergs into one layer i did um i think uh that's <laughs> that's a really good question so all these right here are one layer and i think i just kind of organize my layers by the way they would actually fall in nature um mm -hmm. and so if there's like one plane that i think i'm gonna treat the same way then i actually just put them in one layer because it can get really tedious and complicated to manage all those layers for sure yeah you're on the wrong layer and you're like frustrated it's no good yeah so I'm using just an, the <laughs> the letter X for this X. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah. love that. I noticed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're just using the type tool. I love it. Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, there's like little shortcuts that you learn over time and stuff. Absolutely. And why not? Like perfectly straight lines. It's all high uh, resolution and everything. So totally. perfect. And I'll just put that right there. Yeah, I'll, I, you know, I'm organizing my layers, but eventually I'll probably like even group more and more together um, mm -hmm. as we move forward. I come from a fine arts traditional background. So I actually felt for a really long time, just not comfortable at all drawing on a tablet. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me a while. I think I just like, I forced myself to, and that's what I did. I, uh, I actually wouldn't allow myself to draw on like pen or paper. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Restricting yourself, like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Can't get good at this. Even if it felt more comfortable to me, um, I knew that I wanted to be able to use these tools uh, in a more natural way. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of just like brute forced it and over time, you know, developed that. Oh, let's see. I'm missing a, this thing. I don't even know what it handle. <laughs> That's a fascinating. Yeah, you're just getting it symmetrical. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, I like kind of the design of that. I think initially I made this thing way too long anyway. Cool. Okay. Perfect. Now I have to like remember where everything is at. <laughs> this is, yeah, this it's is five million layers, layers, layers yeah. later. <laughs> exactly so this is where i'll start like tidying up guy okay. let's see so would you recommend that for somebody coming from a fine art background that they would just kind of restrict themselves to digital media and find their best way um i think it depends on their goal you know mm. um i knew that i wanted to work and like digital art and like digital that space um for myself and there wasn't any other way to sort of do that besides mm -hmm. forcing myself to um but i would recommend if you feel like something is a struggle to just mm -hmm. do it first and then decide if it was hard after right 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 yeah interesting <laughs> yeah. i don't if that makes sense i mean yeah no, yeah. it makes sense to me. I get it. 
Um, by the way, Taylor says, uh, great tip, by the way, using the contrasting colors. Oh, yeah. And uh, Brianna says, Kevin, do you like working uh, on Photoshop on the Mac over Windows? Is it a better feel? Interesting. Um, I haven't have worked on a on yeah. a Windows in like, oh my gosh, maybe like it's been ten a years. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, I have colleagues that do, and uh, I have some that don't, and I think it to to each their own. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. find what you're comfortable with and totally uh i use pc i used to use mac so um i agree totally that you just kind of find out what works best for you and if you don't want to like you know invest in both machines to try them out just try out a friend's just uh yes. you know borrow something or ask if you could just uh try it for a few minutes and you'll get a, an idea yeah i think the tools are really interesting you know the tools that different artists work with I'm super amazed uh, what people can do like purely using like the iPad, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's remarkable to me because I'm not used to using that. And mm -hmm. I have friends that are like that use that tool and they aren't familiar with maybe using Photoshop. So they kind of find like what I do kind of uh, they can't conceptually like understand it, you know? For sure. Yeah. By the way, uh, somebody is asking, let's see. Uh, or KB says, label your layers. And I was wondering, do you label your layers? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a debate. Yeah. Like it's no right answer, wrong answer. Yeah, it's just yeah. Interesting. <laughs> uh, for my own work, if I know I'm the only person that's going to work on it, then I will be a lot more lax. Right, right, right. Because I'll, I'll do like the bare minimum, you know, like right here, you can see this is like one, two, three. Um, but it's because I have knowledge of what that means. However, gotcha. if I'm working on a team and I need to work collaboratively and pass this on, then I think you should absolutely you know, I'll, I'll absolutely label my layers because mm -hmm. it's a courtesy. And absolutely, you need structure in a team. You need structure, it looks good on you. Um, people will wanna work with you more and they'll, they'll want to work with your files. Um, mm -hmm. So it, I think it's a good habit to develop if it's not natural, you know? Absolutely. I agree yeah. completely. I think that's the same answer I'd give. So good one. <laughs> good yeah. job being the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you, are but... you a neat person too, Anna? Like... Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I am purely chaotic. Um, but it's I, I work mostly on my own. I uh, freelance. So I, it's been a while since I worked with the team. But if they need layers ordered in a certain way, like, don't be a jerk. <laughs> you got to layer or yeah. organize the layers and all that. Totally. Um, it's just like, you know, if you have a roommate and they like it clean, like you got to keep it clean. So yeah, <laughs> you just got to. <laughs> I'm always interested to see if there's a correlation between someone's like digital space etiquette and like their actual <laughs> the physical environment right? like oh my god i remember um having a friend that he just had like he was a, a browser tab hoarder and so <laughs> um yes digital he, hoarders <laughs> he would uh yeah like have like 50 tabs open at any given time um totally but as he had these tabs open um he wouldn't want to get rid of them and mm -hmm. so he had an app that would store them away for him uh and like so that he could revisit them so he wouldn't just like close it mm -hmm. but he had another app where he recognized that this was an issue that he would press a button and it would just automatically shut down all of the tabs that he had oh seen. wow just all of them gone yeah. <laughs> all that work <laughs> but I feel like there's there's a time and a place for a lot of tabs I know I've definitely done that when uh, like looking for a new apartment or something and you need like all of the options in front of you yes but yeah there are people who habitually do it where it's just they never 
think to close it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Or like uh, clean their desktop, you know, things like that. It's funny to see what people's habits are digitally as opposed to real life. <laughs> um, so I kind of switched over to uh, the brush to fill in these shapes just yeah, because definitely. they're like highly organic. Um, and to do this, and I'm not quite like, to be honest, I'm not quite sure if I have fully solved what I want these shapes to look like. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of being pretty lax. And then it's something that I know that I need to come to later and address. Absolutely. Uh, which is great to know that, you know, it's not just a straightforward, oh, you know, everything you're doing because you're a professional artist. Like, I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. You're always finding new things, new ways, and uh, not 100% confident about every piece. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I feel like people have the impression, or sometimes people have the impression that you reach a certain caliber of your art where <laughs> everything feels good. Yep. And, like your paintings come out like butter and the whole process is super, <laughs> super easy right yeah. yeah but i don't think that's i know like amazing artists that um they still struggle we all struggle through the works that we do because when you want to keep growing it's hard it should feel hard um, yeah and it should growing feel pains. a little bit yeah painful um I mean, I compare it a lot to working out uh, in a way yeah. in that if you kind of are not at the gym for a while, um, when you step back into a painting, at least for me, it can feel really jarring at first. Like everything hurts. Everything feels <laughs> uncomfortable and Ow. like painful. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. This is a very fresh, uh, what would you call it? The analogy is fresh for me because I did squats the other day for the first time in forever and my nice. thighs are just dying. Yeah. <laughs> just like, <"Why?" laughs> but that's the point is like, if you don't do it for a long time, it's going to be harder to get back into. So just yeah. like keep it up to avoid that. It's that good, that good pain, right? Exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm a little proud of it, but going upstairs hurts. Yeah. <laughs> But um, also, by the way, I sorry, Stan, I've let your question go for a while. But Stan asked, uh, Kevin, do you use a Wacom tablet or trackpad slash mouse? Uh, interesting. Um, I use a Cintiq um, tablet and then I use like a mouse right here. Um, and I switch. I don't know how uh, if I have like a, a reason to it, but I just like switch between sometimes I use the pen and sometimes I use the mouse to click things. Right, when you're, you're oh, when you're doing the pen tooling, did you yeah. use the mouse or the stylus? I use the mouse for that. Interesting, um, okay. Although I did have a coworker that kind of, he said that using, and I, I'm not sure, I have to like dig into this, using the pen tool will sit, using the actual pen mm -hmm. um, more will save your wrist and will like sit, will just like save your joints more. Interesting. Yeah. Which is super important. I always like to uh, say stuff like this on Adobe Live or anytime we have a crowd of people. Guys, ergonomic setup. Like make oh your setup as ergonomic as possible. Don't hurt yourself while you're working. Just minimize that pain, tension, everything. <laughs> yes. I can't stress that enough, especially if you're aiming for this to be sort of your livelihood mm -hmm. because things, you know, things fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> like hurt and like fall Should apart. Should be the title of this, things so, fall yeah. apart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of filling in colors right now. And yeah, I'm not, tell us. I'm not quite sure exactly what I want my palette to be. I have like a loose idea. Um, but what I would like to establish right now are just like the values. Um, so because, you know, these things are closer or this like arch right here is closer. I know that I need that to be darker. Um, mm -hmm. What is in the distance? And like <clears throat> I up here in the color wheel on my top right. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really great tool because things that are closer to me, generally I'll just choose something that's lower right here in that corner 
Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll just like push it to the right to find different uh, different hues or different sorry different saturation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when I rotate around, I'll maintain that same value, um, but then I'll shift the the hue a bit. Absolutely. So it's finding those like controls that you set certain things and then you can change one thing. Totally. And, yeah. Control your values and your uh, saturation. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I find it really useful. I um, love that there's a tool that allows you to like find your right working way of uh, finding colors. Yeah. It's, it's great because when you're painting traditionally, you don't have these things. I mean, I guess when I was in art school, I had, we were required to buy like a cardboard wheel. Yeah, the totally. Wheel. Like the color it's, wheel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. And you would have to like manually look at it. And then sometimes there's like a window. So you could look at the, the objects that you're actually observing. For sure. And now you can do it in two seconds. It's there and it's free. <laughs> it's part of your Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my husband, James, when we were doing uh, fine art painting, we, we met in art school, so he's an artist too. And oh, cool. um, he made his own little windows like for different uh, ratios and stuff like that, like whatever canvas he was working on. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> Um, and also if you are interested in traditional painting, just by the way, James Gurney has a YouTube page that is mm. absolutely amazing to see a lot of, um, different traditional techniques. He does a lot of painting from life. Uh, so it's a good James place to start. Gurney did, is it Dinotopia? Is yes. The he's the oh Dinotopia guy. And yeah. he's got a book called, uh, Gurney Journey, I believe. <laughs> and it's like a holy grail of painting knowledge. <laughs> yeah. That book is amazing. Um, absolutely. I feel like what he does so well uh, in, in that book and um, is that he actually, I'm going to jump to these jellyfish because I know what color I want for them. Um, jump to the jellies. Yeah. Sometimes I'll, if I, if I have a stronger feeling about what I want to, if I know what color I want them to be, um, mm -hmm. I'll attack those subjects first because everything else will be relative choices to what they are. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so I'll kind of like just rough that in. Let's see. That's a great tip. Like if you know what colors you want, just start there. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, James Gurney does a really great job at um, teaching kind of environmental lighting and ambient lighting and how to light things in uh, different settings. For sure. Which is something that I see sort of not always in the, the tool belt of if you're, if you're first starting out, like maybe you go from black and white, you know, value shading first and you try to translate that to colored. Um, and then what happens is like, you add more white to make it brighter, you add more uh, black to make it darker, and then it kind of flattens the values. But in real life, um, light is different and shadow is different and your fill light is different. So, you know, you just, you can pick up more as you go. So, so true. And uh, color is just, it's a whole nother layer of complexity to your, your brain. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. to do at once. Um, so yeah, having a, a step-by-step, -step, I think is key to following for somebody who's just getting into it. Like logic is key. And, yeah. uh, that's a great thing about James Gurney as well is, um, and thank you, Cody, for putting a link to his YouTube page. He's not just a great artist, but a great teacher, uh, where he lays things out really logically, gives you reasoning behind it and is also pretty entertaining. So <laughs> it's not just uh, like, oh, I have to learn painting. It's like, ah, another video's up. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great by the way everybody's talking about um being safe with your your hands uh making sure that you're staying good cody apparently mm. got some rsi flare-ups because of inktober oh no yeah you got to take breaks and like stretch your hands and rotate them absolutely it's super key to take care of yourself and if you're pushing through an injury because of a deadline it can it, i know people who have been out of the you know art industry for a year maybe more mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they flared up an injury too much and it just took them out so 
rather take a week off and not do anything than take a year off against your will. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a really scary thing when that happens. I mean, I, I definitely have like a wrist brace that I'll wear at night sometimes right, um, just right, to stabilize right. things, but I, I try not to get to that point, you know? Of course, yeah, yeah. prevention is key, but uh, knowing what to do when you have a like pain of any kind is also really, really important because uh, I know that with different injuries on me, like if I've ever hurt my back or something like that, um, you know, if you put ice on it, it, mm -hmm. uh, it can be at the wrong time. If you put heat on it, it could be at the wrong time, but usually like you have to just know what goes with what, like yeah. you're resting with ice and you can stretch with like heat or whatever, you know, stuff like that um, so that you don't use use your healing methods in the wrong way <laughs> so just research <laughs> I, I like that term healing methods <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> healing yeah. uh, by the way jerry says this guy is so chill he should teach yoga lol <laughs> uh <laughs> so uh the third uh thing that you're doing i think career-wise yoga instructor <laughs> oh yeah oh my gosh that's really funny. Actually, I used to be an elementary school teacher. No um, way. A long time ago. Yeah. I You're just a pure person. I love it. Atlanta, oh man. I was, I was probably not the greatest teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you say that, but you never but, know. Well, I would have these like kids that were just bonkers, you know, and <laughs> sometimes I would, uh, my strategy for calming them down was to speak as mo monotonously as I could. So I would just like, my, my voice was so boring. Um, <laughs> and then they would, Low you know, they would, they would calm down so that I could finally sedate them enough to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> so your voice really is your power. <laughs> you just use yeah. It. <laughs> but some people will think like, oh, I'm an extrovert or an introvert, but it's totally contextual um for sure yeah okay let me see so sometimes i you know at this stage i like to actually zoom out a bit um just so that i can have a better picture of what's going on mm -hmm. i also forgot command s like all s all the time because you got to save your work <laughs> save everybody save if you're uh, working on something right now save it yeah i've been in <laughs> such so many situations that were just not the best <laughs> for sure yeah, yeah. just save yourself totally um or command <laughs> oh, oops. okay i have two different machines and one my command f is like to flip the canvas uh, mm -hmm. And the other one is to like fill, and I really should make those things uniform. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, it didn't work. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. Okay, <laughs> so now I I have more of the value solved. It looks pretty good, and if you ever want to check, um, let's see, shift F, you can just put. Uh, a black layer up on the very top and yes. I set it to color, right? Yes, I do the same thing, love it. Yeah, so I'm seeing here like, maybe this mid one is a little bit too dark and I'll have to like dial that back a bit. Um, but this really helps like drill in and, and I can afford to make the value of the top of the gradient and the bottom of that uh, like ocean actually quite darker uh, mm -hmm. to enforce that perspective if I want to. Definitely. Um, but everything's a choice, so. <laughs> it's looking so good already. And oh. just like your values and everything. I mean, you're pretty analogous with the background, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, blues and greens and a little purpley in the sky. Um, but that's just going to make it so poppy with the um, the jellies. Yeah, totally. Love it. Um, let's see. So. I feel like at this stage, I'm like looking at a reference over here and going back and forth, but um, I kind of want to start just roughing in some uh, like texture into the background. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if other people do this, but I always start from back to front. Um, gotcha. 
Yeah, and that that helps me. And so what I might do is I'll take one of these like brushes, right? Oh my gosh, I have this brush called <laughs> one brush or no, rule them all. <laughs> I got I got the this, one true brush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And in the darkness, find them. <laughs> I, I got this from my buddy Frankie because I was like, oh man, I really like the way that you paint textures and you're able to get these like values and everything like so fast. Mm -hmm. Um and he sent me this kit. I was like, what that what is this one? <laughs> Oh. yeah 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 <laughs> i love it and so you know i have some stuff here but um i don't need to go that that deep with the background yet i think i'm going to actually address that later um but the cool thing about setting a gradient first is that you can pick uh different you can pick like you can color pick mm -hmm. um and then you can keep getting a lot of variety, but s staying somewhat in the value ranges that you've set for yourself, which for sure. is really important because you don't want to keep redoing the work that you've done. Uh, yeah. And so definitely, but you're basically here. like marking it up to give it texture, but not, yeah, losing what the original gradient had in place. Totally, totally. So Excellent there's some tip. of that. And by the way, in 45 minutes-ish, uh, now like 42 minutes, we're going to be doing an artist spotlight, which is uh, where we feature an artist, one of you guys, uh, to celebrate the work and just show off your Behance profile. So if you guys want to be a part of the next one, then there is a little tab right above the chat called Artist Spotlight. You can nominate yourself or another artist and be right here on Adobe Live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we love it? <laughs> I wish, honestly, I, I love Adobe Live for meeting new artists and everything. So I feel like the spotlight is a little mini version of that. We don't get to talk to them, but we could at least see their work and, you know, work talks. So <laughs> it's a form That's of right, communication. For sure. <laughs> I kind of have this arrow up here in the top left. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just always to sort of remind me that my light source is coming from one direction. It's oh, not... Really? Yeah, it's not necessary, but um, it's something that I just do every once in a while. Have you um, had issues with that where you're like, oh, my lighting's coming from all over? I, I think for me, it's more of like a, a mental thing. It's something mm. that I'm just trying to, you know, if I have more devices uh, in my canvas that make me feel comfortable, mm -hmm. then uh, the painting itself will just come out better. For sure. Yeah. Whatever little notes you can leave yourself are always advantageous. Yeah, totally. Little like, I guess like, yeah, I feel like um, Hansel and Gretel dropping food or whatever. <laughs> for just, yourself, yes. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, for future self. Yes, I do that all the time. Um, one of the tips that I picked up at a conference one time was to uh -huh. leave your piece when you know what to do next. So if you're saying like, okay, oh. uh, it, it's, you know, end of the work day, I have to leave this piece, but I know that I want to turn that shirt purple or whatever when I come back, then when you come back, you have a first step and then yeah. you can continue from there without having that, you know, oh no, what do I do? How do I get it back into this piece? You're already in it. That is a great tip. Yeah, I really liked that one and I've been trying to utilize it. Of course, we all, you know, forget things from time to time. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that it, leaving your notes is kind of along the same line. It's basically communicating with your team, but your team is your forgetful brain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's hard. I feel like when when you're when you're painting, you're actually like project managing and doing at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're organizing, you're um naming your layers your your brain is like working back and forth you're observing uh different references and stuff and it's a lot of like management and multitasking or at least For the sure. way i do it so uh anything you can do to like help yourself is much appreciated for yeah <laughs> i've started doing uh, that with like 
admin tasks, you know, when you don't yeah. want to reply to emails or something, it's kind of like, okay, do it as a gift to your future self. Like tomorrow me is going to be so happy if I reply right now, because then it's just one thing off the plate. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anthony Jackson, by the way, says, ooh, those values. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, I try to, so I, I feel like the thing that I find in painting is that, um, I try to establish the hardest parts in the beginning so that I can enjoy mm. it later on. Because, <laughs> Make it fun later. Yeah, well, I just run out of steam too. Uh, even in my work day, like I'll try to do the most de brain demanding tasks um, up front, like in the beginning of the day, because uh, after lunch, I feel like my, my mind is just mush for a while. <laughs> I can't function. Oh, that's so funny. Because I'm total opposite. Like, I feel like in the morning, I start up very slow. <laughs> and like, yeah. by the time it's almost bedtime, I'm like, I'm good. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have your, have your 8 p.m. coffee, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, absolutely. man. But, <laughs> oh, Cody Bear says, I love Kevin's layer name is Big Jelly. Lol. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for this jelly. <laughs> yeah, it's like big and small jelly. <laughs> you know, just name them what's most obvious to you. Yeah. So <laughs> right here, I feel like I am creating some foundation for where I think the values are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and once I do that, sometimes like, actually, I should bring this back up a little bit just to see um that's when i i'll start playing with it a little more so mm -hmm. inside of this like kind of underbelly of this arch uh maybe that's when i'll take like a, a soft brush but with this hard line um mm -hmm. this hard lasso tool so that you can isolate a section yeah and it gives you like a nice edge right Right, one side crisp, the other yeah, like, yeah, faded, whatever you call it. Yeah, Soft. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is a great tip for sure. Because I know that some people struggle with like getting the edge control that they want, mm -hmm. and yeah, it is about finding the tools that allow you. Yeah, and like even when I first do it, maybe it doesn't look exactly the way that I want it to look, but. I know that I can kind of go in and fix it later on. For sure. But at this stage of the painting, I'm just trying to establish some uh, approximation of what I think, you know, I want for later um, mm -hmm. so that I can instill like confidence in myself. Absolutely. And yeah. it already adds so much depth, just a few like little passes of that. And instantly yeah. it feels like it's a very depthy arch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally <laughs> it's a word <laughs> but yeah i love it it's so it's looking so good Thanks. already yeah studies are really important I, I forgot to mention but i actually you know before this painting um before the sketches and everything uh had like these studies that i did just because i'd never ah. really painted this concept before or i even spent you know, maybe like 20 minutes on something like this. Yeah. So I'd understand like maybe how these shape breaks happen or like this is becoming more saturate, you know, underneath because of maybe the reflection of the water. Um, For sure. And I'll pick up on things that I didn't really realize before. Yeah. That is absolutely so key guys listen to that yeah Do, like the smallest of studies can give you such confidence for a huge piece and so true man like something like glaciers you don't just like instantly know how to paint that so uh doing the time taking taking a time to study it is so key oh my and gosh yeah get a little sneak peek of the jellies yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome. i feel like god i think it was like an old uh, high school class that I took where uh, we we create a mental model um, and like uh, an abbreviation of how things look so maybe you'll you'll know that a face is like a smiley line in two eyes um, but 
as you draw more faces and you look at more faces, it's actually far more complex than that. There's like plane shifts for the nose. There's like the eyes go in more. There's like your nose bridge. There's like, there's the shape of the skull, your ears in a certain position. Um, and the more that we draw from life and study, the, the more accurately we can kind of move away from the mental models that we've constructed absolutely oh, yeah and get more variety because if you study people they're so different it's crazy how much of a difference everybody has to each other facial features are just all over the place yeah totally in the best way variety is the spice yes, of life yes. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I totally agree. I actually had a teacher who, um, she was Asian and she had a thing where she would show the difference between um, how eye sockets are for different, like the different oh, cool. races, like features of different races possibly. Um, I mean, everybody can have any feature that doesn't define anything, but mm -hmm. just saying for her, when she put her hand over her eye socket like this, her eyelid was touching her hand. And for us, like a lot of us were white kids. <laughs> and so yeah, yeah. we were just like putting our uh, hands over our eyes and you can't feel the eyelid because they're sunken in a little bit more. And it was just one of those moments where I was like, I didn't even think about that at all. Like what kind of depth changes there are in the face based on different features and how, um, how sculptural it can be, you know, a drawing yeah. is creating a 3d model basically. Um, but I do think that sculpting is a really good way to figure a lot of that stuff out. And it asks you questions that you don't think to ask yourself. Yes. So it's really good. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's great to, I think art is really cool. Like you can grow in all these different ways. You know, you're always like teaching yourself. Every time you paint, it's a new, kind of lesson that you're creating for yourself. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I started doing landscapes because um, it was something that I realized that I wasn't practiced at. Like, really? I, yeah, I, uh, I really loved character design um, and I would end up doing <laughs> like these really cool people or characters but with super abstract, like lazy backgrounds. Mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was like my way of- Everybody amazing. has that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm just trying to paint what I want, but they yeah, need a background. <laughs> they just exist in ether. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it, it's a hard transition to make, like trying to get good at backgrounds. And I'm sure you've learned a ton. It shows even just in this piece, how, how close together um, your horizontal lines are on the plane shows mm -hmm. so much depth. And that is not a thing that you just know. It takes studying to like make mm -hmm. that depth read in the right way. That's at least one of my struggles that I've had with backgrounds. And it looks like you know, you know what you're doing. That's why I'm surprised. <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh. got good at backgrounds. Cause you know, well, calling them backgrounds makes it sound like, oh, they're just for the background, but landscapes are such a form of art. Oh my gosh, they're, they're yeah. like 90% of it to me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, it's so fun. Yes, so pretty. Yeah, and it was totally, it was like, and also it was just like something that was really uncomfortable at first, mm -hmm. but that kind of over time, um, after I got more practice as it, I became more comfortable and then I could actually enjoy it rather than, than just study it. And I feel like there's always like this hump that we as artists have to subject ourselves to before we can get to this like next stage of enjoyment. Yeah. Absolutely. This, 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 this Again, like, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, the like, you, you aren't always gonna be super confident what you do and yeah. there's no time when it's like, oh, I've done it all. <laughs> I know it all, it's done. Uh, so if beginning artists are uncomfortable, just know that that's gonna be the rest of your career. <laughs> yeah. But in the best way possible, if you can make it a fun part of it where you're like, ooh, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really good perspective to have. You know, if you have a growth mindset. Absolutely. You, you feel uncomfortable or like, you know, when you're running or whatever, working out, exercising, you feel that sort of pain, you know that you're creating progress for yourself. Yes. 
the yeah. exercise analogy comes back. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just a reminder, 30 minutes now until the artist spotlight. So uh, Kevin, that's for you as well. We've got about mm -hmm. 30 minutes till that. And then we'll have a little bit like 15 minutes after that. So awesome. just to let you know. I love that you're putting the, the smokiness in. That's so cool looking. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to use kind of like a, a rougher brush here. Mm -hmm. just because I know that the smoke will be inherently more textured, or at least the way that I want to portray it will be. Um, and this is something that <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I feel like I'll save pieces of the painting to be more therapeutic. Like, Absolutely. Right. Like certain parts are really hard and, and laborious <laughs> and I have to think really hard about it. Um, but then there are other times where I can go on autopilot and give my brain a rest. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I've had um, whole projects like that where one of them will be very thought heavy and design heavy and the other one's just painting. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really nice to have those to flip between. So oh, if you're ever totally. finding like too taxed on the brain or not thoughtful enough and you're bored, just mm -hmm. find the other side of it. Oh, uh, yeah. And I've also yeah, I've had projects that were like, the whole way through, maybe for like five hours, I've, I'd have to like think so hard and I felt like everything was on fire. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Everything's on fire. How appropriate. Everything's on fire. <laughs> so much fire. Um, by the way, for those just tuning in, I think Jason was asking if you use reference images. And yes, we've seen a, a ton of references that Kevin had. They're awesome for um, icebergs and uh, yeah. rockets taking of off jellyfish <laughs> so cool uh and also this is a uh, a painting piece uh you work in the what would you call it it's a technological sector or something but mm -hmm. for your uh personal pieces you like to bring a lot of like it looks like traditional painting but digital so a lot of that fine art perspective i imagine yeah um <laughs> i i feel like when i think there was a period where i wanted everything to look really like clean um, yeah and I think I just went through kind of different stages. And right now I'm in a period where I want, I want something in between. Um, hmm. And these are the things that I just find like interesting and cool, you know, <laughs> which is a lot of the reason why <laughs> I, why I like things. Yeah. <laughs> There's this book called Austin Cleon called Steal Like an Artist. Have you heard of it? I have, yes, I've heard of it. I've never read it. Yeah, I, I, okay. It's a really short book and I haven't read it, but I listened to this <laughs> I listened yeah. to this podcast called Where Shall We Begin? Or no, no, sorry, another podcast called What Will You Learn? Um, and it's these two guys and they do uh, like brief synopsis of books. Um, and they were talking about this book and it's all about how we, nothing is completely original anymore. Like when uh, we make art because everything is derived from some sort of source and it's not necessarily bad, but I, the ingenuity comes from how we as artists decide to piece together uh, different reference points. So hmm. uh, his, his advice was to look at the artists that you really like, you know, maybe on Instagram or wherever you find your sources, art station, hands and try to figure out uh who their inspiration points were right go to the source yeah and then <laughs> just keep digging back and back and back like i really love this artist killian eng um Ooh, killian. and super detailed beautiful work um k-i-l-l-i-a-n-e-n-g i think is how you spell it but um, his work is super derivative of Mobius and that doesn't yeah. make him any worse of an artist, but he, he's found like his own way to kind of interpret and like spin, you know, to his own needs. Absolutely. And there's no way, even if you were trying to really emulate an artist, you're never going to be them because everybody has their own unique perspective on not only like how they lay down everything, but your own brain, what you want to say is always going to be different. Um, yeah. So I always 
highly suggest studying other artists and uh, multiple artists will definitely make it easier to like conglomerate your own style. Yeah. 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 And, and maybe not even just art, you know, or look at design from life and look at it from different sources. Like, right. The so reason what, why this, what do you like? <laughs> yeah, totally. Go after it. Them together. Um, and I mean, the thing about, so the book also talks about like, when you make things that you think are cool, because <laughs> you're like, you have tastes, right? Or you, you have your own taste or whatever it is. Um, it means that probably other people think that that's cool too. So when Absolutely. you keep making work that inspires you, that you're interested in, eventually you're going to find your people mm -hmm. uh, and people will find you. That's so true. Your community yeah. and everything. And also, I mean, <clears throat> once you reach back in those artists who love, you know, are getting it from artists and artists, are we all just going to be emulating cave paintings eventually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also Cody Bear says, I love doing that. I got my favorite artists following list to see who they're following and find their inspiration. Oh, so. that's super smart. Yeah. Definitely smart. And it's part of that. Like, I think that at the beginning of an art career, it can seem, I don't know, like daunting to come up with a lot of references for art that you love and references for subjects that you want to paint, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But don't rush it. Just go at your own interest pace where it's like, okay, if I'm interested in something, just follow that thread. And uh, as you age as an artist, I definitely think that you, it becomes part of your fun where you're like, I just want to look at art. I'm just going to surf Pinterest or whatever, you know, for a while. And it's your free time suddenly instead of research that you have to do or anything like that. And it, yeah. it's just, it makes you a better artist. I mean, yeah. And whatever kind of, you know, if you use like a portfolio site um, and like Behance or ArtStation or whatever, one thing that I did for a while was just, I just made it, I made that feed my homepage. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever I opened it up, I was always getting exposed to the new <laughs> Inundated. stuff. Inundated. Ah, images. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Making it really easily accessible. And uh, I just, I know I had an issue with that. Like looking up reference used to be a, a task rather than an enjoyable thing. And now it's like how I relax, how if, if there's ever a frustrating part of a piece, if you just look up some reference to get inspired again, yeah, it, like it's really easy for me to get inspired. I'm just like, I love that. And I love that. And I love that. So yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's important to feel positive about what you're doing, you know, Definitely. whether, whether that positivity comes from the fact that, uh, you feel good because it's hard and you know, you're learning something or you feel good because it's therapeutic and you're just having fun. Um, but I've seen so many artists just kind of a lot of friends, you know, who kind of fell off and they were so mm -hmm. good, but they had trouble kind of keeping that positive mindset. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's unfortunate because I don't think, I don't think that's discussed that much. Like the mental health that uh, comes along with, the art making process. I am thoroughly convinced that every artist needs an art therapist. Yeah. <laughs> Where you talk about like yeah. how your relationship to what you're doing every day is because it really is a relationship, you know, the right. art can feed and fuel you or it can, sometimes it can hurt your mental health. So yeah. um, it's a lot of that perspective, uh, especially with social media. I'm sure you know about this, uh, but we've yeah. talked a lot about like, how social media can be a wonderful boon to modern artists. It's crazy how much more connected we are in this day and age than it used to be for art and uh, people who hire artists, but it can also be a- you know, making work for myself and no one has to see it. Absolutely. It's the it's true- like, like singing in your car when you're driving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, what do you truly want to do? Because there's nobody looking. Yeah. And so you're just doing it for you. And by the way, I love the pops of the hot colors coming in here. It's so satisfying. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm really into like high key contrast stuff uh, and having moments of that. 
Definitely. And just the, the element of fantasy, by the way, can we take a moment to thank Kevin for this? Because like the surrealism and the fantasy of this piece is just so like alluring. I love it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of surrealism and of course high fantasy, come on, like who isn't, so. I need to like, like stretch my hands. <laughs> Definitely, let's all yeah, take a little hand helped. stretch break. Yay. We do a thing on my stream called monkey paws where you make like the, the fingers and these four different oh. poses and hold them for a few seconds. And then, uh, yeah, you just repeat those four things. So monkey paws, everybody, stretch your hands out. <laughs> and then you gently shake them out at the end to loosen that back up. I just heard like 50,000 cracks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the icebergs cracking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Giving life to this piece. <laughs> yeah, it's just like my, my hands. <laughs> <laughs> the art and the artist, you know? Yeah. It's like the uh, the dogs matching the owners in uh, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which, by the way, Anthony and I just went to the park yesterday and saw somebody who exactly matched their dog. It was perfect. <laughs> so good. Uh, Cody Bear says, PSA, stretch your wrist. And Anthony oh, says, my gosh. thank you for surrealism and fantasy, him in person. Oh, oh wait, thank what? you. Uh, it's realism and fantasy monkey paws there we go and then i read eric sue's comment uh which was it ended with him in person uh, -huh. uh all right excellent yeah something about neil patel interesting yeah you guys are talking oh. amongst yourselves in chat so good to see you eric sue hello welcome let's see so... and the dope king is in the chat saying hello uh -huh. hello dope king <laughs> So oh, okay. this is kind of where, um, you know, I feel like I have m most of what I want to establish. I think I have to jump into this, this, uh, kayaker soon, but <laughs> going to have to, yeah, I went, I've been in pro I feel like, uh, unknowingly I've maybe I've been avoiding it, but <laughs> when you, when you, totally. I feel like when I have, uh, more things established in the painting, then I feel more uh liberal to just break rules um, for sure and to work outside of everything that i've done you know mm -hmm. um i should put those on a separate layer it's okay i'll do that later how dare you no. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah those are off the the jelly so it's pretty easy to select them and everything yeah uh, really cool too adds a ton of motion to the piece yeah. where it's like drifting down let's see Okay, so yeah, sometimes when I feel like maybe I'm spending too much time uh, in one particular area of the painting before the whole thing is complete, um, like I'm zeroing in maybe a little bit too much on this like part right here, then I know it's time for me to jump to another part of the painting. Yeah. Because otherwise things will start to look like you've given something a lot of attention or there's the detail isn't like spread out completely. Um, mm -hmm. and, and at least for me, like I, I want, I want variance, you know, and the stuff that I'm doing. Right. And to build up like rough to refined, do you work that way where it's like, you kind of build all of it to a finish level, but get the focal point a little bit more dialed I do. in. Yeah. yeah. And no, it's, I, I had this like conversation really recently with, uh, my friend, also named Kevin. Hey, um, Kevin's Unite. <laughs> yeah. But he had sort of this perspective of, um, you know, he'd started the sketch, but at a certain point, he actually wanted to, he would always do at least one part of the painting to a finished level, mm -hmm. um, just because it would help him uh, have confidence or like also understand what the end goal was for mm. the entire piece and i thought that was really interesting for sure i think that's one of the important reasons to talk to other creatives is just to figure out what's going on in their mind uh yeah. which is why thank you adobe for bringing me back as a host because i love talking to you guys just like yeah. different artists coming in it's a wealth of knowledge so oh. thank you for this master class <laughs> let's see also, is this you in the kayak? He's wearing a hat like you. You know, I feel like, have you heard the quote that like all art that artists create are like, a, it's an extended self-portrait. 
<laughs> it's just a one long self-portrait. <laughs> yeah, like maybe these jellyfish are part of like, I don't know, my morning right now or like yeah. the, the experiences of the fires that have been going on. Right, I can't help but feel like there's something there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure there's something there. Mm -hmm. It's deeply affecting to have uh, like natural disaster level stuff happen to you. So don't ignore it. Express yourself. Yes. Feel it out. Yeah, it's hard. Definitely. Oh, Anthony also says, in addition to stretching, remember to drink some water. By the way, Kevin, if you need a drink, That's go for it. idea. <laughs> and Vincent says, water homies unite. <laughs> it's, you know, the crew of water represent. Uh -huh. Water tribe. Ah! Perfect. Water tribe. <laughs> oh, man. It's such a good series. It's so good. good. If you haven't seen Avatar The Last Airbender, go watch it. It's on Netflix. Do the thing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have about, oh golly, like 12 minutes before okay. we uh, do the artist spotlight. So cool. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I feel like this is getting to a good place. Absolutely. I've seen it from the beginning. You could just see the finished product. <laughs> it's like <laughs> slowly getting there. I feel like, uh, well, not even slowly. This has been what you get less than two hours per day. So this is incredibly fast. Great job, Kevin. <laughs> uh, thanks. But uh, it's funny, but sometimes I feel frustrated by pieces not happening faster because I already have mm. them done in my head. Do you ever do that? Or you're just like, it's done here. Just have to yeah. make it here. <laughs> totally. I think, I mean, that's the whole idea of like translating onto paper, right? What Or whatever your medium is and mm -hmm. getting what's in your brain out there. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. Not easy at all. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's a form of being vulnerable. And so there are a lot of different elements to it that can hold you back and, uh, we're here to tell you it's best on the other side. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And also, Cody, thank you so much for reminding people that if you want to nominate yourself or artists for the Artist Spotlight in the future, there is a tab above the chat that you can do so. Um, and also, if you're just joining us, by the way, this is Kevin Kwong, and he's doing amazing artwork here for us. Uh, this is a surreal painting of fire jellies. I don't know if we came up with a, an official name for them. <laughs> lava, lava jellies. Lava jellies, lava jellies yes. Because yeah. I love that. Because I don't know. As a kid, I always wanted to eat lava. It looked like jelly stuff. So it was like, mm, nom, nom. <laughs> um, <laughs> so these creatures are just the ultimate forbidden candy. <laughs> lava <Yeah>. jellies. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen one day. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> they could be... Yeah. I don't know. I imagine like Willy Wonka version or something where you could eat everything in a room and mm -hmm. there's actual edible versions of them, but not alive. Not alive. <laughs> not into <yeah>. that. <laughs> oh man. Also, Vincent says, um, this piece reminds me of some kind of mock-up of a modern day animated avatar reboot. Oh, and that's not a compliment. I don't know what it is. That's awesome. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the programming that I consume definitely like makes its way into my brain too. It's inspiration. Think, yeah. Which I love as artists, again, like being in a community of artists, having similar references in your brain. By the way, uh, earlier Anthony said, I just followed you, Kevin, and I love your um, Sailor Moon tagline apparently you have on instagram do you remember what that oh is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah which is another one of those references i feel like a lot of artists have in common where it's I'm like oh i love sailor moon or you know neopets was a thing and oh um yeah. avatar the last airbender is a huge one of course because it's just an icon <laughs> it's so good it's so good yeah i feel like they do such a good job at or the animators at just like simplifying um the facial expressions like the, if you look yes. carefully when they're acting um they do an amazing like abbreviation of what expressions look and feel like for sure oh Sokka is a perfect example of that yeah. his face the journey it goes on in that show yeah, it's so yeah. Good. <laughs> and then it's inspiring mm -hmm. too because it's like oh i want to be able to draw that and do that you know <laughs> absolutely like they have all the 
the realism that makes you believe in the fighting scenes and everything it feels like there's real weight and anatomy going on but they also have those expressions that really push it into like anime territory where it's just over the top and you see the raw ex- emotion coming out and i love that the same yeah. with uh teed titans that's another one where i was always like those expressions they're so, so over the top and i love it yeah i'd love to hear what other people are watching <laughs> For sure. Yeah, and you, uh-huh. do you have any other, um, like, I don't know, inspirations that are a really big part of your repertoire or whatever you say? Like, you know, are you a fan of anything? For me? Yeah. Uh, God, like everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just all the things. Okay. Yeah, Go so watch much. this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Actually, let me think. I've been watching Demon Slayer. Oh, what's well, that? Just, it's like this anime, it's called Kimetsu no Yaiba, but um, they've done a remarkable job at uh, mixing together 2D and 3D. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So the the effects on it are just, they're super brilliant and it's, it's just like so beautiful. Nice. Um, what else have I been watching? I, I watch less tv this time yeah i watch i've been right. watching the good place <gasps> i just yeah. finished that oh, oh my gosh. yeah oh how far are you i i finished oh uh, you're done okay no spoilers but yeah, yes <laughs> okay, yeah yeah i i binged that really fast and really it's far. very easy to binge it's such a delightful show and really i don't know it's it's very deep so i love it yeah, it's super, but it's like surprisingly deep, right? For, <laughs> for like a comedy. Absolutely. I think that comedies sometimes have the biggest ability to tell deep stories because they're not scaring away the audience with it. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's not so down that you can't get to those really deep places. I don't know. There's like, if the show is just um, focusing on like the afterlife in a down dreary way, it would yeah. not appeal to the same audience at all. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. By the way, we do have some things uh, coming up in the chat. Cody Bear says that Winnie the Pooh was a huge inspiration for her. I mean, oh. Cody Bear. <laughs> Bear. Um, there you go, yeah. Yes. Oh. Anthony Sims is saying, Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beast. That is a great new show, which I think the new season is coming out in October. So if you haven't gotten on that, there are plenty of seasons to watch. My, oh man. Yeah, I've heard such good things about that. <laughs> Definitely. You should watch it. It's got a lot of stuff I'm sure you'd love. Okay. So you've seen it too. Yeah. I've seen, yeah, up to the most recent season that's going to come out. And it's by a lot of, um, well, it was created by Rad Saycrest, which is an artist that I watch uh, on Twitter. Like I love his work. And he's been working on that for like a decade at least, like just to get that show out. So it's, you can tell it's a passion project, you know? Somebody really loved it. Um, by the way, we have about five minutes before the artist spotlight, just to let you know. Uh, and Valeria says, oof, Demon Slayer. I love the art of it. <laughs> so good. So you got no. other Demon Slayer lovers. And let's see here. Oh, I just scrolled the chat. Um, Vincent says, I get most of my inspiration from video games rather than anime. Oh, personally. yeah. It can come from anywhere, totally. anywhere, anytime. Yeah, uh, yeah, video games are so good. Um, yeah. I remember when Monument Valley first came out, which was like a iPhone game. Have you have you played that? No, I've never played that. I'm writing it's all a, this stuff down. Yeah, it's a puzzle game, but there's like so many beautiful geometries. Like every every portion of that looks like it, you can just save it on your phone as a, a wallpaper. It's so well done. Love that. Uh, I do have literal wallpapers of um, a game that I haven't played, but I've seen a lot of the art for. Anthony played it. um, And by the way, Anthony Sims is my best friend. So if I keep saying Anthony, that's who I'm talking about. (laughs) Um, And it's Child of Light. That was a really good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really watercolory one, right? Yes. And there's another one that's coming uh, out, I think, next year called... I'm going to butcher it because it's a French name. It's like Dordogne, something like that. Dordogne. And it's all watercolor. It's so, so beautiful. Um, if you guys haven't seen that yet, it's D-O-R-D-O-G-N-E. So look that up on Steam. Check out the trailer. It's absolutely beautiful. Such a like wholesome slice of life. 
Okay, so here I have like a lot of different colors going on. And mm -hmm. sometimes what I'll do if I know I have like patterns and um, just the hues are very separated is I'll just create like a multiply layer on top of everything else. Um, and that kind of helps me just get uh, a uniform shadow on things. So mm. as you can see like that, for example, um, and one of the things that I'll do is I will take, I'll like sample a color from the environment um, mm -hmm. to make sure that the shadow isn't just pure black, but it's relative to what is kind of happening in, in that space. For sure. Um, yeah. Kind of mimicking nature, like yeah, those yeah. colors are together. <laughs> so exactly. makes sense they would overlap. And do you find that uh, multiply layers are your favorite way to do like light and dark? I kind of, it honestly, it depends. Like mm -hmm. I switch around all the time. Um, and sometimes I don't like the way that it works. I feel like it, it looks different based on well, what hues you've established and what, what hues are the shapes are. Um, mm -hmm. But like other times I'll use like, what else is here? I'll, I'll like, go through the list, you know? <laughs> and I like, oh man, maybe I'll use a vivid light on top of that for like a bounce light or something. Maybe I'll combine it all together, but that's looking pretty cool too, like this linear light. So I might actually go back and like repaint some of it. Um, and for me right now, all I wanna do is like create some sort of volume because uh, mm -hmm. that's like lacking right now, yeah. Yeah, so you like the the flats first and then yeah, basically yeah. the only goal is add volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'll do the flats, but um I'll take like a smudge brush and do whatever. And that's a really quick way to like blend things in and get your gradients or whatever. For sure. Uh, by the way, Cody Bear says that her name or her moniker of Cody Bear actually came from her dad when she was three years old. That's so cute. <laughs> I love it. Um, and also there are some questions about brushes that you're using. And I believe uh, they're a mixture of Kyle's brushes and some that your friends have uh, yeah, recommended, the, the right? Friends, there's like, um, honestly, sometimes I just Google brush. <laughs> like I'll, I'll Google like Photoshop brushes or like concept art brushes brush. or whatever. Yeah, brush. <laughs> I'm sure those images of brushes like really help you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Love that. And you can find like so much stuff out there. It's kind of fun to explore. Um, I don't think I've found any like magical brush that I really like mm. fell in love with or anything, but because I'm switching them all the time. Um, and sometimes I'll go through phases where I only use like the default photo, like these guys, mm -hmm. the default Photoshop brushes, um, just to bring it back to the basics and not rely on textures and making sure I'm kind of do everything, doing everything the, the way that's like, like I'm lighting everything correctly, you know? Absolutely. I'm not confusing myself or whatever. No confusion. Not yeah. here, not now. Yeah, 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 please. Um, are you ready to take a quick break? Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. All right, it's time for the artist spotlight. And this week we have Sneha Kadaba, uh, which is an amazing artist that we have here on Behance. Uh, I'm so excited to show you her work. Yeah, we've got her Behance page up. Uh, she's got um, a ton of different patterns and a lot of repeating stuff, which I absolutely love. If you guys have never seen uh, any of my streams, I do uh, pattern work as well. It's called surface design, I believe, in the industry, if you're trying to do it for that. Um, and first of all, got some mock-ups here, people. Woohoo! We love oh. seeing work that's actually on something and like intended for a purpose. So love seeing that. Uh, and Sneha, oh my gosh, these colors are absolutely beautiful. I'd say yeah. some of these Values are reading really well as well. Mm -hmm. Oh and man, yeah. I, I, I love, sorry, I just want to, no, I go love for it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, those please. thin lines of those leaves or trees inside of, you have some of them in positive space, like for the leaves and you have some in the negative space, like with the, the, the leaves of the stems or the roses or the tulips or whatever they are. Um, 
So I love that you're playing with so much. It's it's really cool. Absolutely. And having those abstracted plants is just such a, a good call for this style where it's it's clean lines. You know, it looks like maybe could be vector, that kind of style of artwork. And I always love when the um, when it's vector, you can like lean into it sometimes and create very abstracted shapes that just mm -hmm. they read so solidly with those clean lines. Now we've got a pumpkin one. Tis the season. Oh, yeah and apples and figs. Ah, there are some fig trees near me that are just bearing all the fruit. So I know this is a fall crop. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's called Autumn Harvest. Love it. Contains hand-drawn motifs in a soothing yet colorful palette. Bring yeah. cozy evenings and pumpkin carvings or bring on cozy evenings and pumpkin carvings. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, your, your palette choice is so tasteful. Yeah. For sure. It's very sophisticated yeah. uh -huh. where it feels like you cool. know what you're doing. Oh, and look at the individual elements of the pattern. This is a really cool way to show off what's in it without having the pattern distract from it, where it's like, oh, I see that there's a lot of elements, but here you can see exactly what you've made. Individual assets, and they're beautiful. This pumpkin is so charming. Mm -hmm. I love those lines. And the variation of space between the lines, A+. Boop, boop, boop. All right, excellent. Let's go to, uh, what was this called? folksy colorful birds <laughs> i love it oh they're so cute and the little outstretched legs for some reason having like little short legs like this make me feel like they're just adorable <laughs> yeah. eh. little legs oh it's so cute excellent use of values and colors once again i feel like your subdued color palettes are what adds to that sophisticated mm. feeling where it's something that is really I don't know, like it feels like it could belong on a uh, children's thing. I always love like children's patterns and stuff like that. And this is very friendly for that. But it also has that feeling of like, um, you know, papyrus. There's like a mm. fancy wrapping paper. Story. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and man, it's just like it belongs there. Dino Kids Pattern Collection. Woo. I love dinosaurs. Are you a dinosaur fan? I am a dinosaur fan. Yeah. <laughs> How could you not be? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would die for a tent like this as a kid. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Love it. Oh, the only thing I think of is really the white cool. kids would mess this up so fast. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. But you know, you can't have that hold you back when making patterns. You just gotta make all the colorways. So cool. Yeah. So this is using, I think, nice. same elements from the pattern uh, or the design with the dinosaurs, I think. Yeah. So it's got that like fronds in the middle and they've used the same assets to make a separate pattern down here. Oh, yeah. Really I mean, good way. Such a it. good, if you can increase your efficacy with design and get so much out of it, you know, even though maybe you're using some of the same shapes or placement or tiling patterns, uh, you're having high contrast and you're having low contrast and you're choosing different palettes. And I think that's the, that's the thing that's so fun about Illustrator is you can make so much <laughs> with so little. So. Absolutely. One asset can go very far. Two assets, twice as far. Yeah. <laughs> it's math, people. <laughs> All right, this is Trendy Boho Abstract Collection. Ooh. Nice. Okay, I watch a lot of um, home decor YouTubes mm -hmm. and I feel like they always have this style of artwork on the walls because it just mm. is such a good muted decoration that's not like, a, oh my gosh, there's art, but it's like beautiful. So it adds yeah. a ton of visual interest without taking away from the design of the room. Yeah, the feel like big shapes have such so much personality. I think if Perfect. you scroll back up, there's like mm -hmm. a, to that first one on the right, even that hump. Uh, oh, sorry, down a little. Oh, sorry, this yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the uh, dome behind her. Yeah, the dome. There's like this divot on the right and it's it's imperfect, but it still feels balanced. Yes, uh, which can be very organic feeling of just yeah. like the, uh, it's a handmade, but a clean edge. So yep. it has that perfect mix of like, we get that the style is a, a lasso-y kind of clean line thing. Yeah. And down here, we've got more images. Oh, the mock-ups are really doing a great job for this. Yeah. So All right. cool. Definitely. Got geometric seamless patterns. Oh, 
Excellent. Oh, these are absolutely beautiful. I love the color choices on this because it's such a bold pattern. It has the ability to have strong colors that don't uh, feel too overwhelming. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's a great thing to have in a portfolio as a surface designer as well is just like to um, have a bunch of different simplified patterns, not always mm. like illustration based. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Showing breath. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of the name of the game with surface design, I think, is just showing that you have the ability to do so many different things with one, yeah. with, with your, I mean, your artistic style for it, I mm -hmm. guess. And this one's called Ice Cream Party, playful elements and patterns. Love it. Oh, heck yeah. Love Ice Cream Party. That's such a good theme. It's so playful and fun. And such solid shapes to call from like a little mm -hmm. ice cream pops are designed to be like a bunch of solid colors so it yeah. works really well for this yeah and then you have sprinkles oh i love okay this would be so cute to wrap a present in i love it and it's so simple what a good idea excellent yeah. job all right let's look through the last two we've got oh a simple plate design this one's nice. called bright botanical i would eat off that in a hot second <laughs> and you know they say that um like warm colors make you more hungry right is that a thing <laughs> yes that's why mcdonald's i think is red and yellow oh really i oh, believe the yeah it, it invokes hunger <laughs> <laughs> appetite Invoke the hunger of the yeah <laughs> yeah just like the plate. love it um this last one is such a lovely color palette we've got nice organic branching shapes yeah. love it and i think with all of these you've really captured the um the essence of like a good pattern to me is that you don't see it repeating and it's also very just charming to the eye so you got all that stuff Sna. and also it says hi i'm Sna, uh, a designer and illustrator living in leafy oxford in the uk uh, by day, I work in the creative as the creative head for a large organization, and I spend the rest of my time doodling and playing with my cat. Yes, we love. Uh, if you like what you see and would like to find out more uh, or want to collaborate, please get in to touch. There we go. Uh, just follow the link on my website and fill out the contact form. Boom. Now you guys know if you want to hire or collaborate with Sneha, then please reach out to her. Uh, she's absolutely done an amazing job with this uh, and a uh, super strong portfolio. So yeah. if you ever want to um, build a portfolio on Behance, then this is a great template to follow. All right, and now we can Very hop nice back into work. your work for a few more minutes here, and then we will say goodbye at the end, but you've got you got plenty of time. Take your time, Kevin. Cool. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, okay. by the way, in the chat, uh, we've got, I love the sprinkle pattern, says Cody. Cody, you would, of course. Jack says, uh, Cody says, yeah, yes, red and yellow go, is used for fast food colors a lot because it makes us think of things like mustard and ketchup. That's funny because I was actually looking at my two, um, I have scrunchies and this one's my mustard one. <laughs> and then I had the ketchup one and I was like, hmm, hot dogs. <laughs> uh, Jack has come out of lurk mode and okay. says, sorry, I was lurking. lurking. Ah, and here we go. Oh, back to this beautiful piece. And this would be a... Um, what would you call it? Uh, complimentary? Yeah. Which part? Uh, the color, oh, overall yeah, color yeah. palette, would complimentary you say? Complimentary colors, yes, are on opposite sides of the color wheel. So that is correct. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna put my hair up with this mustard scrunchie just cause I have it. So there, scrunchie. <laughs> it's all for you guys. All right, where were we? So yeah, let's get back into it. <laughs> like it's I intimidating. Feel, <laughs> I feel like I actually want to collapse this. So I merged all these layers um, because I kind of have an idea of where I wanted to go now. Uh -huh. um, so I feel like I don't have to rely on the separation as much. Um, and I want to turn that uh, line layer. And when you abandon your sketch. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe I'll go back uh, when I'm working on these like 
ice arches kind of more. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, I think we're... And that we can work on this, so there's really no rush on any of it. <laughs> I feel like every... <laughs> Every time I start a new painting, I'm like freaking out. Like, oh, this is <laughs> terrible for the first 50% of it. And Lies. I, I have to have like faith that I can get through it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta sing to yourself and then boom, you got it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'll try to do as much as I can on the earlier part, just so that, um, I have the things established that I know I need um, so that I can just like have fun. For sure. And that's yeah. like really the the point of it all is to have fun, right? So yeah. <laughs> trying to get to that, that time that you can just let loose. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I feel like with the organic shapes of the jellies, the lava jellies, as we call mm -hmm. them, uh, it's really that's that's a fun part to me like i imagine painting those would be so fun i kind of want to jump in there and just like <laughs> it's so fun yeah. it's such organic shapes you get to just like create motion and like waves of information uh that that don't have a clear design you know it's not yeah. like a rigid uh, thing and it's like well if i mess up here no one's gonna really know right <laughs> like, <laughs> there's who are that's you another to way to look at it. i mean yeah, like what is fire? Does it follow? I, I can be more explorative, especially because people understand fire and smoke to be inherently organic and fluffy and, and whatever. Um, but with things like the human face that we see over and over again, there's so much more. Everybody has such a, a better memory of it. So when things look yeah. off, they look off <laughs> can't put the nose on the cheek Don't yeah it. you can't you can't <laughs> hide you know it's so true especially i have the utmost respect for um caricature artists that can capture celebrities or like anybody's face to their actual likeness that to me is one of the hardest things yeah make something look like somebody what totally which is why i'm so scared of commissions uh i used to do them but stopped after a while because everybody was like oh make me out of you know into a character and i'm like <laughs> i'll oh, try <laughs> so much pressure can you wear the same shirt for the rest of your life so this looks like yeah. you every day because <laughs> like exactly face is hard but um also translating thing into style like i feel like once you try to make it look like somebody it instantly goes to realism and uh i've always you know, like stylized realism much more. So yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's moments for everything. There's moments to be really realistic. And there are amazing, like hyper realistic artists out there. <gasps> so um, many. That do it's such so good, good work. Yeah. Um, I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, streaming with uh, or I hosted Sam Peterson last time I was on here and he does amazing stylized realism where he like pushes proportions and things in a really fun way but definitely more realistic than what I do and it's it's such an amazing art form like it makes me want to do more realistic stuff a lot of times where it's like you can see art that you appreciate so much and want to make it uh but yes. sometimes that differs from what you want to make for your career uh but yeah, again yeah. We could go back to making art for ourselves, you know? I can paint however I want if it's just for me. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's a jam, right? <laughs> that's exactly. What that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> just whatever you say goes, so yeah. no pressure. <laughs> Which, I'm by a... the way, this is looking super cool. Oh, thanks, yeah. Uh, I love, this is like the most fun part is just adding the highlights. Um, because things start to really take form and we understand so much more by, um, lighting. And if we can push like the values, uh, the full range, then we get more and more information about what the piece is, uh, shaping out to be. For sure. Yeah. And do you feel like, uh, you have an idea of what you want to emphasize the most in this piece and the least in this piece? Yeah, um, well, I think in terms of detail, at least, like I build from front to back. So 
uh, things that are more in foreground or like mid ground. Um, that's where I uh, concentrate the most on. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll spend more time on it in the beginning. But overall, like, I think what is important to me about this piece in particular is that I have this like rhythm going on. So I have this like composition where it's, it's you're following the journey of this migration. Mm -hmm. And since at least, I guess, Western audiences, we, we read from left to right, right? For sure. so I imagine people are like entering the piece this way. And maybe the first thing they're seeing is like here, but then they jump to this jellyfish right here because it's such a focal point. Yeah. And then I want another piece of information here. Let me use a different one. I want like the viewer's eye to go from here, then maybe down here and maybe inward. And so that we can have the same perspective as this person right here. Mm, yeah, definitely. So I think about like that rhythm compositionally and I like these like shapes that kind of created. Um, you have like this huge shape and then a medium and then a small The one. negative spaces, yeah. The yeah, spaces. and even this tiny one too because it just makes for a more interesting painting. <laughs> for sure, it does. And I love that you laid that out for us. That's really, really good information to know that your brain is working on all that well. I mean, you laid out the piece in the sketch, but it's still sticking to it as you paint it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I And I think, um, I mean, like I said way, way earlier, the more that you commit in the beginning, at least uh, for me, I feel like the better the final outcome is. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because it took me a while to get from um, the the really rough sketch to the refined. I, I'll, I'll redraw things. I'll like sit on it and think about it. I'll flip the canvas a couple times, whatever. Yeah, flipping the canvas is important, but you got to remember that it can also be fill, <laughs> depending yeah. on apparently your computer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious to. Do people have like rituals <laughs> for what they do, you know, before? I summon the art on my computer, <laughs> it's my yeah. ritual. <laughs> no, I totally understand. Yeah, everybody's got a different workflow. I don't think anybody uses the exact same keys, yeah. but um, that's kind of the point is you find your flow. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, we are close to wrapping up. So we just got a few minutes left. And I wanted to remind you guys that tomorrow there is going to be a daily creative challenge in uh, the morning before us. Uh, there's a half hour challenge where you can follow along, learn about how to use Photoshop and all of its many, many tools that we've been talking about. And then uh, during our stream tomorrow where we did the spotlight today, we're going to be reviewing the challenges on the Photoshop Discord. So if you want to be a part of that, then definitely check out uh, the Photoshop Discord that we have uh, for the DCCs. You can find all sorts of information and help there. And I highly suggest anybody of any experience level join that because it really can boost your skills in just one stream. So if you want to get better at anything, it's the place to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and by the way, just Kevin, you've been such a joy. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh yeah. Course. And everybody remember to vote. That's another thing. Yes. <laughs> if you're in the US, we have a few deadlines coming up in different states for registration to vote. So uh, please make sure that you're registered and this election is super important. So make a plan to vote. Yeah. If you take anything from this whole live stream, it's that you should vote. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's the only thing that I want people to, people to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. I end all my streams that way because it's, so important cannot emphasize it enough and uh kevin you're gonna be voting so role model nice. right there totally. <laughs> uh and also thank you cody for putting the daily creative challenge uh link in the chat so again if you're over on youtube come over to behance so that you can chat with us and get all those awesome links and also we're gonna be back tomorrow if you didn't hear it's gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get more awesome lava jelly action don't eat it don't eat it yeah uh, <laughs> even if you want i'm yeah. trying to think about the uh the advice point that you gave earlier which was to try to leave knowing you know what what you want to do next when you yeah. up again what do you think 
Um, let's see. I guess today uh, we got done what I aimed to, which was establishing the, the values and the palette and kind of getting some, uh, you know, head start on the details. So I feel like next, next session, um, I'm going to have to add texture to these background elements, um, add more highlights and push the values even more uh, within the objects themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this is, this is looking really good. It's yeah. looking great. Oh, can we see the black and white version of it for a sec? Yeah. Love to see that. Ooh, that's so cool. <gasps> it's got yeah. such mood, like, dang. Yeah. But yeah, the colors bring it into like a, whatcha? I don't know, like so much life comes from the colors. Yeah, it's kind of ominous here, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit, like that jelly might kill him. But here, yeah. like, nah, they're pals. <laughs> Oh, all right. I think it's around time to, well, we got three more minutes. We can, it's fine. You paint for one more second. Okay. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll do as much as I can. Yeah. Whatever you feel and leave yourself any notes that you can uh, follow tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think that I mean, everything's come along so well and I can't wait to see where you bring it tomorrow. Cause it's one of those pieces that I'm like, I don't know, watching other people paint, it's so interesting to think of like what you have in your head as a roadmap forward. Cause I'm like, it looks so done. Oh, <laughs> it yeah. looks so good. <laughs> I mean, that's a really good thing to think about too, is um, I don't want to overwork it, you know? Absolutely. I, I want to make my brush strokes count too. Like uh, I, the term is, I think your, your brush stroke economy. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a finite economy. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I mean, get money, so yeah, oh, for sure. And it also comes down to what we were talking about earlier of taking care of your hands and everything. If you have a, an amount of brush strokes in your life, you'll want to spend them well, yes, yeah, <laughs> <Take your> hand. <laughs> limited amount. That's one of the reasons I don't go for super, super detailed stuff anymore because I used to do like the I'm going to make a wallpaper that's all tiny, tiny stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, it'll take your life right out of you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has a choice. <laughs> yes. We all have choices. Yeah, we make all have yours choices. Well. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, Anthony Sims says, Uncle Big Lava Jelly wants you to vote. <laughs> the jellies are saying, you. <laughs> I love it. All right, now we can wrap up. Uh, okay. Thank you so, so much for joining us today, Kevin. Thank you for joining us chat. It's been absolutely lovely. Um, we want you to come back tomorrow. So 9.30 Pacific time. We are going to be AM, by the way, not PM. We aren't a nighttime chat <laughs> or uh, stream. That would be interesting. But we will see you tomorrow. And uh, tune in for the DCC before that if you want your work reviewed by us. And we will see you on the next one. Is there anything you want to say before we leave, Kevin? I think you got it. Vote. Yeah. <laughs> Register to vote. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Yeah. Be good. Yeah. People. All of that. <laughs> all right. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Right, thanks, everyone. <laughs>